Hi, I'm Nick Karaz of Creative 111 here with Sapphire to bring you a very awesome tutorial in working in Avid Media Composer with Sapphire version 11 and Mocha to track lens flares within your scene. So what I have right now in my sequence is a Bentley car. You can see that there's a camera moving around it and I'd like to attach a lens flare to the left headlight. You'll see that the way that my sequence is set up is I have two of the exact same clip one on track V1 and one on track V2. And on V1, that is what I'm currently monitoring. Under my filters, I've done a search for S lens, and that's gonna bring me to the S lens flare auto track section of here. And I'm just gonna drag that onto the clip on V1. And you'll notice the lens flare actually gets added to the scene and is trying to track the bright pixels in the sky we don't want that. We want it to track the left headlight. So I'm going to go into my effect editor and in the effect editor under the Mocha section or just above the Mocha section is I'm going to edit inside of Mocha. And in here, we've got the ability to do planar based tracking or texture based tracking, which if you've only used Avid's point based tracker, this is just a lot more powerful. I want to see how loose we can create masks to get the job done of attaching the lens flare to our left headlight. So I'm going to actually move to the last frame here because I think it's going to be easier to track from here the left headlight. And I'm going to select the X-Spline tool, which is the easier way of drawing masks in Mocha compared to Bezier tools. They're just a lot more flexible. And I'm just going to click and draw a mask around this headlight. I'm just gonna double click to close the shape and make any adjustments to the points that I need to individually. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna press Command A to select all the points. And you can actually pull outward to make it rigid or pull inward to make it nice and smooth. And now that I have all those final adjustments made, let me draw your attention to the layer controls where a layer has been controlling, referencing your mask. I'm just gonna double click that and call it left headlight. Now that that's renamed, I'm actually going to just change this color here. And this actually reflects the uh, matte overlay. If I just turn that on, you can sort of see it reflected once I click on it. And of course, I can change its color to whatever I want. Now that this is all set up, let me draw your attention to the tracking area. We're going to use about 90% of the pixels within that defined area, and that's because it's really small. Uh, bigger shapes that you create in Mocha would probably use less pixels depending on what you're trying to track. In this particular case, we're tracking translation scale, rotation, shear, and we're going to add perspective. And we're, there's a large motion in the shot. And with this information, this is where we can now choose to track this. Since I'm on the last frame, I'm going to track backwards. And we're going to see how Mocha holds up for the duration. And for the majority of it, it held up pretty well. I might be able to guide this a bit, the shape, by selecting just the outer points or selecting the shape itself and just dragging it a little inward. And the great part is it creates a keyframe and is now going to interpolate between the original keyframe that was made on the last frame of the shot. Now with this information, we're ready to go back inside of Avid Media Composer. So let me close out of Mocha and save this. And now what we'll do is under the effect editor, we're gonna go inside the Mocha section and reference the Mocha mask. And that's just basically by your ability to show Mocha only. This mask is really rigid. So I'm just gonna increase the blurriness to a value of about two, a point two. Now that that's set up, we're gonna apply another lens flare auto track to the V2 track and reference this mask on V1. So let's close out the effect editor. I'm gonna go back into my filters. So I've done a search and here's my lens flare auto track. I'll apply that onto V2. And when we start to make adjustments on V2, we'll make sure that we're monitoring that actual track. So I'll just click there to move the monitor. And under our effect editor, what we wanna do is give it an input track. And instead of this track, we wanna go one track below. It's now looking at the mask on V1 and you can see there a lovely lens flare on the left headlight. If I scroll through, it just tracks brilliantly. And now 
it gets even better. So inside my effect editor is my ability to choose of over 147 lens flare presets by loading a preset. In looking at the various categories that are here, I seem to like the film basic, which I will select and load into Avid Media Composer and notice it's still tracked towards the scene. Obviously this might be a bit bright for your tastes. So I'm gonna just scroll down here and under the brightness value, make a value of 0.3 to start, uh, maybe up that to 0.5. Start to play around with the actual size of the lens flare by bringing that down to about 0.5 and then playing with the rays rotation, the hot spot threshold and other amounts to design the lens flare exactly how I would like to in the scene. Now, you're probably gonna wanna track a lens flare to the right headlight as well. And rest assured, you can actually go back into Mocha onto that original clip where we're referencing or just showing the Mocha mask and add another mask. And then on this above clip, you can change what's called the max hotspots to two. It's gonna then reference the two masks on layer V1 and add two identical lens flares. And that's how easy it is to track lens flares within your scene inside of Avid Media Composer with the help of Sapphire version 11 and Mocha that's integrated inside. I'm Nick from Creative 111. Thanks for watching.